Hey Luke here with CaptainCarb.com and this is part two of my boat video. So in part one I showed you how to get a cheap boat and here it is straight off of Craigslist my $800 boat trailer and motor setup. So it runs like a, a dream, it does great, 800 bucks for the whole thing. Now I'm going to turn it from just nice to awesome. Uh, this is the Red Devil series from MonsterRodHolders.com. This is a 3345 rod holder. It's uh, what I got on my, my pontoon boat. And I'm going to put six of these bad boys on here because here in Virginia you can fi fish as many rods as you want. And I'm going to put them on the back of the boat. And you do this because when you're fishing in current, you want your nose facing upstream and your rods facing downstream. And you do this because if your nose is facing upstream, it takes a much smaller anchor to hold you in place. I misplace this Sharpie every single time. What did I do with that Sharpie? Oh, that's such a big hole. One of the reasons I love these rod holders is because they come with so many mounting systems. A lot of other rod holders out on the market have very limited mounting systems, so um, it's just, it just doesn't work. Your rod holders are only as good as the connection to your boat. These ones come with a rod holder mount that's just perfect for my boat. It's an inch and a half squared and about a half inch thick. And what you do is you just thread this bad boy on and jam it down through the hole and then I've got um, an inch and a half diameter half inch uh, inner diameter washer and since this rail is really thin and the boat's a little old I, I don't want to have a big fish or something tear uh, the tear a chunk of the rail off and so what I'm doing is I'm using the monster rod holder base okay and then I'm sliding in this washer underneath and then putting the nut on. Yeah, I'm liking the look of this. This is this is starting to look look right. This starts to look good. Yeah, well let's let's see what we got. We got a lot of packages today. Mmm, okay, a bow life. It's a swing away trailer jack. Um, yeah. this is, um, nothing you want to see, nothing okay. fun like turpentine. Ooh, ooh, yay! It's like what? A low rent Elite 5X with turf. That's important. Ooh, a, a sw rocker switch kit. Nice. It goes LED lights. Ooh, those are small. I like that. Off the table, Mabel. These two bits are for beer. Here, let me daddy show you how to do it. Ah! Oh! Ooh. Now I've got a couple of these waterproof LED lights. Um, these are for motorcycles, so they're really small but super powerful and they can run off my 12 volt system, the same power source as the sonar and the uh, navigation lights. Um, you don't really need a lot of light to fish for catfish at night, um, but uh, when you're driving at any sort of speed, it's, it's nice to be able to see what you're doing, look out for logs. But more importantly, I need it for filming at night. So, um, so my lighting needs are a little bit specialized. But what I'm going to try to do is mount these somewhere on the boat and have them so that they're like headlights and then I can swivel them around and have them be like deck lights to illuminate my rods when I'm, when I'm videoing. The battery's mostly dead, but looks pretty good. That's pretty decent. Now for this thing.
Um, it's about midnight, so I think that's about enough for one day. We're going to pick this project up tomorrow and uh, keep at it. All right, so this is the rocker switches and the cigarette lighter and the USB plugs uh, that I want to install on my boat. I need these for charging my cell phone and Tommy's Kindle and these to operate the uh, navigation lights and the uh, docking lights and uh, other things. Um, so here's the complicated part. Okay, so I know the part with the fuse goes to the battery and the black ones the grounding wire and We've got these blue and yellow wires, and I have no clue what those are for. And it says that they're the lower dash light positive, lower dash light negative. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. So, <laughs> I'm gonna have to figure that out. This is the battery box I bought. And uh, it's about 30 inches long, if I remember correctly. And so I bought a, a Model 24 battery that only takes up about this much space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a hole in the side and I'm gonna mount my rocker switches and then I don't have to cut into my boat. I'm gonna have everything, all the electrical, controlled with switches on the side of this. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and there's enough room in here where I can have the battery and then these wires and everything stick in. And I'll just get some styrofoam or something to protect the wires from being hit by the battery. Well, the kids are in bed, and tomorrow I don't have work. It's the uh, first full day of Christmas vacation, and I want to take this boat out on the reservoir to see if we can catch some little channel cats. I want to get the fish finder working, though. That would be a huge plus. So I'm going to see what it takes to install a fish finder. I've never done it before, and uh, we're going to see. It's going to be an adventure. Here. Okay, we've got the transducer. We've got a bunch of ins Instructions. You're gonna need to hold on to that. Got a mount for the monitor. Got a fuse. Power cables. Wow, that looks complicated. Uh, and a mounting bracket for the transducer. That's the power cable. Now I, I'm, I'm no no engine electrical engineer here, but that's a lot more than uh, red and black. We'll have to figure that out. Will this transducer fit on the bracket I already have on the boat? Man, that would be awesome. If I could do that without having to drill new holes, that'd be great. All right, looks like I'm drilling in the boat. Hey, Becca. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. It's a little cold. I'm okay with that, babe.
Oh, there's fire. The fire's out there, even though you're not in there. Mm-hmm. Oh. Do I cut the red wire? Or do I cut the black wire? Gotta make a decision, Luke, or we're gonna all die here. Then you can come color this one, Steve. Nathan, is that my navigation light? Oh. Are, are you beating my navigation light to death? All right. Let's put this down in here. Hmm, well, that's not a good sign. Oh, no fuse. That'll, that'll do it. <laughs> That is not the right fuse, but you know what? It fits. <laughs> Got a five amp fuse in there. Who knows what's going on? Oh, there we go. We've got silver. Look at that, Tom. Got the fish finder. Break it apart. Watch this. We got this tool right here. See, it gets rid of all of that. All right, so we're moving right along on the boat project. The next step is I need to get the navigation lights hooked up. I need to get the, uh, the LED lights hooked up. And I need to get all the electrical generally wired up. Yeah, do you like daddy's knife? Yeah, he saw a squirrel run by and he grabs my knife and takes off running after it into the woods. Gotta watch this one. You want to catch a squirrel? Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, so now I want to flip the boat upside down so I can work all the electrical in here really easy. Um, but it's kind of a two-man job, but it's just me, so tough luck. I don't have a plan, but I'm doing it anyway. Well, this was a lot of work and I really should have done it with three guys, but my wife was super supportive. But it also gives me a chance to look at the underside of the boat. And uh, looks pretty good. I mean, there's black stuff, but it's not, fiberglass isn't really damaged much. A few little scratches there. It's a little rough right here, but not bad. Nothing, nothing serious. And it gives me access to all the electrical. So this is gonna be a whole lot easier to do the electrical. And I can get under here and get this old marine sealant out of there. This will make things a lot quicker. Nathan, are you helping Daddy out? Ooh. Gotta switch up hammers.
Oh yeah. Alright, so I'm charging up the battery and let's test it out. Anchor light works, nav lights work, bow stern light works. Yeah, there we go. So I took the boat out for a test spin and everything worked really great. I liked the positioning of the rod holders, I liked the setup for the sonar, the lights worked good, everything just worked like it should and I was really happy with it. But unfortunately I'm going to have to stop here for a little while because everything I want to do next is like fixing the fiberglass, uh, putting a paint job on it, maybe putting a liner on the bottom. All of those things require the air temperature to be over 40 degrees for the paints to cure and stuff. And my garage isn't heated, so I need to wait till spring to, to start on the next phase. But in the meantime, I'm going to be doing some awesome fishing in this boat, and I really am digging it. So no problems there. And uh, just really happy with how the boat's turning out. So if you want to see some other uh, videos, check out this video of me fishing from my boat. And you can see part one of this video where I show you how to buy a cheap boat. Thanks for watching and don't forget to click subscribe.